One of the more interesting features about the AirPods Max is the fact that they can track your head position. And that means that if you are producing Dolby Atmos with Logic Pro on a Mac operating system, you can switch the Dolby Atmos renderer into a mode that allows you to use the AirPods Max in order to monitor Dolby Atmos completely immersively. Now, I get often asked if there's a comparable headphone that allows you to do the same thing on Windows or on a digital audio workstation that is not Logic. And the answer to that question is, yes, there is. And those are the... HyperX uh, Cloud Orbit S. Now, these headphones have been around for quite some time. However, they are very rarely talked about in the context of immersive audio production or Dolby Atmos production. So in this video, I want to change that. So let's talk about the HyperX uh, Cloud Orbit S. Let's talk about what's good, what's bad, how to use them, and if you should get them. Let's get started. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I'm a digital media educator with more than 30 years of experience in higher education. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Today about a pair of headphones. If any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join our Discord community. Invert link is in the description below or there's also a QR code here somewhere. Now, before we talk about the HyperX Cloud Orbit S, it makes sense to talk a little bit about the history of those headphones because that is actually a reincarnation of another pair of headphones. And those were the Odyssey Möbius. Now, the Odyssey Möbius started out as a crowdfunding project on Indiegogo uh, around 2018. And uh, they were originally advertised as high-quality headphones that took advantage of the then relatively new Waves and X head tracking system. And if you've never heard about Waves and X, those are these little head trackers that you can put on your headphones. And then these head trackers will be able to track your head position and you can use them for virtual mixing environments and all kinds of things. Now, the original promise of those headphones was that they would combine the high quality of the drivers that Odyssey is known for with these head tracking capabilities that would allow them to be used for mixing immersive audio, such as ambisonics or surround sound. And uh, they would do that completely transparently with the technology through Waves, Waves and X. And that was really, really exciting. Now, I was one of the first backers of these headphones. I think I was number 19. And there was a lot of excitement among everybody who kind of supported that project. Now, when the first batch was sent out, the excitement immediately dissipated and uh, was replaced with frustration because the original Odyssey Möbius had quite a few issues. And most importantly, they had a very high noise floor, which is something you normally don't want to see in a professional mixing environment. Now, the reason they had this noise floor was very obvious. This was the first pair of headphones that Odyssey had produced that was actually wireless, that essentially was uh, Bluetooth enabled. And while they were really good at producing drivers, uh, their kind of uh, engineering in terms of wireless headphones was really lackluster, at least at that point in time. Now, uh, to the credit of Odyssey, what they did is they allowed the initial backers to send their headphones back and they would kind of do a redesign and then uh, send out redesigned headphones. So we got a new pair of uh, Odyssey Möbius and this new pair uh, was better, but it was nowhere near as good as it was originally promised. So the noise floor was lower. Uh, the way they achieved that was with some redesign, at least that's uh, what I was told. And uh, in addition to, to that, they also did a little bit of retuning in order to make that noise for less noticeable. But it was still there. And for this reason, these headphones really never made it uh, to become a very known pair of headphones in the studio. Now, there was one additional issue, and that had to do with the head tracking, um, because originally it was promised that these headphones would be able to be used with Waves and X. And this ended up not being really true. Um, they constantly promised that they would update the software that came with those headphones in order to enable that feature. However, that feature never came. And for some time, these headphones were actually sold as a bundle together with the Waves and X head tracker. So if you want to actually use the uh, Odyssey Möbius in the way they were originally intended, um, you actually had to put a head tracker on a pair of headphones that had an integrated head tracker, which was somewhat insane, to be perfectly honest. So it kind of, um, a lot of people kind of didn't take them seriously and then essentially they just disappeared from the radar. Now, interestingly enough, the original Odyssey Möbius headphones are still available through Waves. So if you want to purchase them, you can still do that. However, they are no longer available through regular retailers such as Amazon. And the reason they are no longer available is simply because they have been rebranded into the HyperX Cloud Orbit S. Now, I'm not completely sure about the relationship between Odyssey and HyperX. So if uh, some of you know how that IP transferred from Odyssey to HyperX, I would be interested to learn more. 
feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. But from what I can say is that those are pretty much identical. They even have the Odyssey branding on the headphone band. I'm not quite sure if you can actually see that here, but uh, they are essentially the same headphones. They look a little bit different and for whatever reason, the uh, the way they kind of redesigned them uh, looks cheaper, <laughs> which, which is interesting. I, I'm not quite sure why they would do that. Uh, but the uh, materials that are used and the drivers that are used uh, are pretty much completely the same. The only noticeable exception is that these headphones are not Bluetooth enabled. So there's no Bluetooth functionality in the HyperX version of those headphones. And uh, at the same time, uh, they also don't seem to have the same noise floor problem. I'm not quite sure if that's somewhat related. I would think that it is. Otherwise, there is no reason why they would have taken out Bluetooth. But uh, from what I remember the Odyssey Möbius to sound, um, these don't really have the same noise floor. So the HyperX version of those headphones are as quiet as they're supposed to be. Now, one of the advantages of these headphones being around for quite some time is the fact that you can actually purchase them second hand or are refurbished for a very low price. At the time I'm recording this, you can get them on Amazon refurbished for 150 bucks, which I think is a really good price for a pair of headphones that have very, very high quality drivers in them. So if you're interested in immersive audio production, or especially Dolby Atmos, and you're looking for an alternative to the AirPods Max uh, on Windows or on a digital audio workstation that is not Logic Pro, then these are actually a nice option, especially for the current price. Now, how do they actually work? Now, the way they work is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, what you have to do is you have to use them in USB mode. So, so you essentially connect them to your computer via a USB cable. And uh, then uh, you switch them into surround sound mode. And what will happen then is that they will advertise themselves as a surround sound system to your computer. So your computer will actually see an eight channel device. And uh, all you really need to do is you need to send uh, surround sound, so 7.1, to, the, uh, to this device and uh, all the processing is done in the headphones. So the headphones have a head tracker included and also a DSP that will essentially take this eight channel audio and will convert that into a stereo depending on the position of those headphones. And uh, that works actually quite nicely and very well. Now the obvious disadvantage here is that because we only have 7.1, we don't really have any hit information. So everything that uh, we can monitor here is just horizontal. However, especially with Dolby Atmos, I feel that this is not really a big disadvantage. In Dolby Atmos, you don't really take advantage of the hit speakers, at least not uh, in most of the productions that I've heard so far. So most of the things are actually happening on the horizontal plane. And for that, these are actually quite nice. So let's see how that works in practice. And I'm going to demonstrate this with the Dolby Atmos renderer in Windows, the standalone version. However, this works exactly the same with any application that is capable of sending out surround sound. So if you're working with a digital audio workstation, for example, the setup that I'm going to show you here is exactly the same. And if you're on a Mac, you can do the same thing. The only difference is that in Windows, we're going to use an ASIO device, whereas on Mac, you can just use the uh, class one audio device that comes with the HyperX Cloud Orbit S. So I've started up the Dolby Atmos renderer and I loaded up a master file. Now the master file that I'm going to use is the same that I used in some of my previous videos. Uh, let's just have a listen. Now the video today is a little bit different in the sense that I cannot really demonstrate exactly how I hear these sounds through those headphones, simply because all the processing happens in those headphones. So the audio um, that you're going to hear later on is not going to really give you the full impression. Uh, and for that reason, I'm going to essentially kind of give you my personal impression after essentially we've set everything up. And with that being said, let's get started. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these headphones to my computer via USB. So let's do that. And then I'm going to turn them on and uh, I need to switch them to 7.1 mode. There's a little button here that I have to press and, and hold and then essentially to switch to 7.1 mode. Now, once you've done that, the computer will recognize that as an eight channel device. Now I've set the Adobe Atmos renderer to work with Easy for All. So if I go into the settings here, I essentially have Easy for All as the input and output device. And that essentially means that if I want to connect or if I want to use the HyperX Cloud Orbit S, uh, all I really would need to do is I would need to go into the Easy for All settings. And here I now see this eight channel output device and I would select 
that and uh, then essentially the um, Adobe Atmos renderer would communicate the audio or would send the audio to this particular output device. And once again, these eight channels would come in uh, as, a, as eight separate channels and the headphone would then essentially do all the calculations with uh, respect to the position that is measured by the head tracker that is integrated in those headphones. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't really work particularly well with Easy for All. Um, and uh, one of the reasons is that uh, if you switch the Adobe Atmos renderer into 7.1 mode, the layout, the channel layout that the Adobe Atmos renderer is sending out is not uh, compatible with the channel layout that the HyperX Cloud Orbit S is expecting. So what we need to do is somewhere in between the Adobe Atmos renderer and the output to the Cloud Orbit S, we need to actually switch some of the channels around. So what I'm going to do here is instead of using Easy for All, I'm going to use Dante Via and that will essentially allow me to uh, remap some of the channels. So let's get that started. So let's start up Dante Via and before I do that, it is best practice to close up all applications that use audio interfaces. Otherwise, uh, there might be problems in uh, Dante Via being unable to initialize certain audio devices. So let's just close the uh, Adobe Atmos renderer and then let's start up Dante Via. Now, in case you're not familiar with Dante Via, Dante Via is an application that allows you to route audio between other applications. Um, so if you ever get into a situation where you need to route audio from one application into another, you can use Dante Via for that purpose. The nice thing about Dante Via is that it works on Windows in exactly the same way as it works on a Mac. So what I'm going to show you here on Windows, you would do exactly the same thing on a Mac and it would work just fine. So let's start that up. And uh, then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the Adobe Atmos renderer. Now there might be a couple of errors that are going to pop up. Uh, they are specific to uh, to Windows, but that's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, so there's kind of this very weird Windows error for some reason that shows up every time I'm starting the Dolby Atmos renderer. Doesn't make any difference. Um, and then let me just see. There's also an error here because there's a conflict with the device. I'm currently using the... Uh, output device here, so it kind of shows me that it couldn't initialize, also not an issue. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the uh, audio device in the renderer to the Dante Via device. And this is essentially where you would, uh, if whatever you're using, if you're working with a game, if you're working with a digital audio workstation, you would essentially switch your audio device to Dante Via so that you can send the audio into the HyperX headphones. So uh, we're going to kind of uh, accept that. And as soon as I do that, uh, the uh, error should actually disappear. Yes, it disappeared. And what I need to do now is I need to simply enable Dante Via for those devices that I'm going to use. And those are essentially as a source, the Adobe Atmos renderer. So let's enable that here. And as a destination, the headphones. So let's enable that here. And what I'm going to do is in order for, for you to be able also to hear something, because once again, currently the audio is just routed into my headphones. Um, and uh, that means that it's not recorded anywhere. So in order to be able to record it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also have the external interface that I'm using for recording listen to the Adobe Atmos renderer. I can actually do that in uh, Dante Via by simply dropping that here. And that essentially will make sure that the that uh, the audio that I'm going to hear is also something that you are going to hear. Once again, you're not going to hear that in an immersive way. You're just going to hear audio. That's really what, what it is. It's not going to be in any special form. Actually, what you're going to hear is you're only going to be here left and right channel of a 7.1 signal, but just so that you hear something at least. So uh, let's do that. And the final thing I need to do is I need to uh, make sure that the routing is correct. And for that, I need to open up the Dante controller. This is an application that you need to download separately, but it's completely free. So you can just download that. And then essentially, if you open that up here, I have the uh, receiver on one side. So those are the eight channels of the HyperX and the 16 channels that are coming out of the Adobe Atmos renderer. I have the Adobe Atmos renderer set to 7.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to map the uh, outputs of the Adobe Atmos renderer to the inputs of the HyperX. And I can simply do that by, by doing it, uh, by selecting that. Now, once again, the channel order is incorrect, um, uh, especially the, uh, 
the the left back speakers and the side speakers are kind of switched. So in the uh, Adobe Atmos ordering, the uh, back speakers are the, sorry, the uh, the side speakers come first, and then the back speakers and the uh, receiver that the HyperX is expecting them in the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to remap that. So I'm going to map the um, these two here and then these two here and that will essentially kind of remap that and that should take care of the incorrect mapping and then let's uh, let's play our audio and let's hear if I hear anything or if you hear anything let's see Now, once again, you're not going to hear any immersive uh, nature of the audio, so you're just going to hear the left and right channel of a 7.1 signal. But what I'm hearing is essentially the audio in a as if, as if it would be reproduced in a 7.1 system. So if I'm moving my head, essentially I can clearly hear that the signal is coming from one side. And uh, essentially the headphones are tracking my head position and presenting the audio to me in exactly the way it's supposed to be heard in a 7.1 environment. So what's my impression? Well, first of all, the quality of the reproduction is really, really, really good. I would say it is about the same as you would get with the AirPods Max uh, in Logic. It's only horizontal, but once again, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference in Dolby Atmos in particular, because you're not really taking advantage of the hate speakers. At least usually you're not doing that. Uh, and uh, and so what you're essentially hearing is is usually good enough in order to, to mix in those environments. However, be aware that essentially there's no vertical information here. Um, the uh, tracking works extremely well. It's probably the best tracking that is out there. There is no drift whatsoever. Some of the other head trackers have a little bit of a drift. This is completely stable. So this is, uh, in that respect, actually really, really, really nice. Now, there are a couple of disadvantages with the headphones uh, that these headphones actually share with the original Odyssey Möbius. And uh, before you go, go out and kind of uh, buy them, I, I, I need to kind of share these little disadvantages with you. Well, first of all, these headphones have quite a bit of clamping force. So, <laughs> so, so I have I have a rather large head, but uh, you know, kind of, I, I can I can feel them. I I, I I definitely can feel them. So be aware that um, they're not uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong, um, but uh, there is some force that is that is that is here. The second thing is that I didn't like the, uh, the the pads. Uh, the original pads that come with these headphones are kind of, they're, they're very thin. And what really happens is that my ears touch the, 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 the drivers, which I really don't like. So uh, what I did is I swapped them out with aftermarket um, pads uh, that are a little bit thicker, which uh, aggravates the effect uh, of the headphones, essentially the clamping force, because now the pads are thicker. So this is something to, cons to consider. They are not uncomfortable once again, but they are kind of, there is a force here. Now, the second thing, and this was something that actually annoyed me quite a bit, is that the um, the sound isolation, uh, these are closed back headphones, but the sound isolation is differs from the left to the right. Uh, there is more sound passing through the left uh, cup. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, it could be because all the uh, circuitry is on the left speaker, or it could also be because all the connections are here are on the left speaker. So there's like an open an opening here that, that might let sound through. This is something that they actually shared with the original Odyssey Möbius. Um, it's not noticeable in a quiet environment. However, if you are in a noisy environment, uh, then you will notice that essentially that uh, essentially there's more sound isolation on the right side than there is on the left side. And this might annoy you or not. It, it quite frankly annoys me a little, but it's it's not a big deal once, once audio passes through that essentially is no longer an issue. But other than that, these are pretty nice. Now, I'm not an audiophile, so I'm not going to comment on the sound quality of those headphones. The one thing I can say, though, is that they sound as good as any other studio headphone that I have. So I think they're perfectly fine to be used in a studio environment. Sound is uh, really nice, uh, very excellent drivers. They look cheaper than the Audio C Möbius for whatever reason. That's a, that's a weird one because, the, once again, the build quality is completely identical. Uh, but other than that, they're pretty nice, and especially for the price of 150 bucks, if you don't mind picking up a refurbished pair, I think that is an excellent option if you're seeking for an alternative to the Apple AirPods Max. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching my videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.